Hello guys, this is Wilson here again. Okay, fine. This video um, is going to be about the second half, about topic one, which is classification. And in this unit, there is a lot to remember. For example, we have to remember all the five kingdoms, all the all the five classes of vertebrates, all the five classes of arthropods, as well as plants, uh, as well as know how to construct a digital Thomas key, which I'll be doing a separate separate video about that as well. And also in that separate video, I'm going to be Telling you guys how to make biological drawings as as well as how to calculate magnification. Okay, fine. Let's start with 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 this video. Fine. Uh, the kingdom of animals is defined is divided into five phylums. We are gonna be focusing on two today, which is phylum vertebrates and phylum arthropods. So so we're gonna start with vertebrates first. Vertebrates are animals with a supporting bone that runs through the length of the body. And they are divided into five classes. Now, the main, most obvious visible one is the backbone, which we humans have them, dogs have them, and cats have them. Next. So we're going to first talk about the class fish. Now, fish are animals that live in water only. They have scaly skin. They have gills and they have fins. Now they breathe through gills. Now they breathe by separating the oxygen from dissolved in the sea water or fresh water into their gills and then they use it. Next is here's a picture of the fish. And you can see that it has the dorsal fin, it has the cooler fin. It has all these different fins as well. You can you can see the gills on the side of, of the body. Next is class amphibians. Well, amphibians gain their name because they can live both in water and on land. That's what differs amphibians from reptiles as students normally get confused with them. Now, they, they breed and live on land, but they lay their eggs in water. Frogs, toads and salamanders are all amphibians. Now, their characteristics are they have moist and scaleless skin, so they have very, very smooth and watery skin. They lay eggs in water, which then give birth to larvae, which is tadpole, and they live in water. But once they grow into an adult, they will live on land. And larvae, they have gills, adults have lungs. Here's a picture of a frog and a tadpole here. You can see that they are actually quite different because one of them live in water, one of them live on land. But you need to know that, okay, fine, the uh, tadpole grows into a frog, and that's it. Next is class reptiles. Now, reptiles is a bit similar to, to amphibians, but they live on land. They have scaly skin, and they lay eggs with rubbery shells. For example, if you ever seen, for example, like a, like a snake egg on a video or a documentary, you'll see that their eggs are not actually they have very sharp shells they have very like this rubbery which rubbery and soft shells but it's actually very very strong now um for example like snakes crocodiles and lizards they're all reptiles and also here's another point amphibians and reptiles and fish are cold-blooded which means that they cannot regulate their own body temperature and another reason for they have watery rubbery shells is because it is waterproof and stops the egg from drying out when they lay them on land. Land. Next, here's a picture of a green iguana, which is found in the Guata, in the Galapagos Islands off the coast of um, South America. You can see that this looks quite like a lizard. You can see they have scales, which is not drawn here, but they have actually have scales. And you can see that they breathe through lungs as well, but they live on land, but they feed in the ocean. Next is uh, birds. Now birds is quite a unique class of animals because they can fly and they are covered with feathers. Lay eggs with hard shells. This is very obvious because if, if, if you ever eat an egg which is from a chicken, you will see that the egg from the chicken has hard shells. Now chicken is a bird. They are endothermic, which means that they can regulate their own body temperature, which means that they can keep their body temperature at the same temperature like all, all the time most of them have a beak well I think every one of them have a beak beak and the heart of them has four chambers 
The eggshells are also waterproof as well. Here's a picture of a bird. See that the main features are, for example, have wings, it has the beak, it has the tail feathers as well, and then you can see that the wings are actually are four limbs, but they have grown into wings. That's it. Now here comes the most important class of animals, which is mammals. Now humans are mammals, our lions are mammals, cats and dogs are also mammals. The, the, the main two features that differs mammals from all the classes of vertebrates is that they give birth to their young instead of lay eggs. All the other classes of vertebrates lay eggs. They feed their young on milk from their mammary glands. And they have hair instead of feathers. They have different types of teeth. For example, if you see for example, the teeth of a crocodile, you can see that it's almost all the same shape of different sizes, but humans have different types of teeth of different functions and different shapes and yeah and their heart has also four chambers now they have a diaphragm a diaphragm is the muscle below the lungs to con to regulate your breathing here's a picture of a rhino white rhinoceros it, it, it's a mammal because uh, it has a um, skin with hair it also gives birth to young this is this is quite straightforward Next, we are moving on to phylum arthropods. Now, arthropods are animals with jointed legs but no backbone. And they are a very, very successful group because they have a waterproof exoskeleton, which means that they have like a very hard, for example, like a body armor outside that protects every their intestines, their hearts, their brains, and all those kinds of things. Now, the main characteristic of all arthropods is that they have several pairs of jointed legs and they have an exoskeleton. And also there's an interesting fact that there are more kinds of arthropods in the world than all other kinds of animals put together. Next, we're going to look at class insects. Now, insects are defined by only three pairs of jointed legs. Which means that they have, they have six jointed legs. Some of them have two wings, two, two pairs of wings, some of them don't. They breathe through the trachea, which is their kind of nose kind of things. Now, their body is divided into three parts, which is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now, the thorax is the part between the head and the abdomen. It's a very, very short part, but it's the main part, but it, but it is the part where the insect's wings are connected to the body. I'm going to speak the pictures for this one because I don't want to make the PPT so long. Next is the crustaceans. These are crabs, lobsters, and wood lice. Most of the crustaceans live in well, live in water, but although some of them live on land, they have more than four pairs of jointed legs. But they have like um, but they are not millipedes or centipedes. They breathe through gills. And yeah, they have an eye, which is the comp compound eye, as the same as insects. They live in very very wet places so and most of them are aquatic so that's why they have gills next is arachnids now arachnids these are scorpions spiders and ticks for example they have they are identified by having only four pairs of jointed legs they breathe through gills called book lungs now these are different to the ones that crustaceans have because most of these arachnids live on land but they and also they sometimes have hair around their body. Myriad pots. Now these are the last class of the arthropods. Now they are these very very long, thin, scary insects that fear most people. Now these are centipedes and millipedes. They have segmented body, which means that their bodies are consists of like a lot of segments. Now each segment have two have one pair of jointed legs. Next is plants, the plant kingdom. Now the plant kingdom have four classes, but we're going to only talk about two today, which is which are ferns and flowering plants. We we'll start with ferns. Ferns are plants with roots, stems, and leaves. They have leaves called fronds. They do not produce flowers. They reproduce by spores. Apart from that, they are pr pretty much the same from flowering plants, except that they don't produce flowers. 
They have chlor chloroplasts, which they use obviously for photosynthesis. Next is flowering plants. Flowering plants are the same with ferns, they have roots, stems and leaves. They reproduce sexually by means of flowers and seeds, and those seeds are produced inside the ovary, in the flower. Next, flowering plants can be divided into two groups, they are monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Now, these two groups have distinct differences that are quite easy to remember and, and identify. Monocots have one cotyledon in their seeds, where dicots have two. Mono means one, di means two, so that's very, very obvious. Now, monocotyledon plants have a branching root system. That means their roots spread out, right, across a very, very wide area, but they don't go very deep. They have veins that run parallel to each other. So if you find a leaf that is actually very, very thin with, with um, veins that run parallel to the leaves, that means you have found a monocotyledon plant. The leaves are very, very thin and long. Now, dicotyledons have a taproot system, which means that their roots, they go down deep, they don't, they, they don't go very wide, and they have little roots sticking out from the main roots. That's called a taproot system. Yeah? Their leaves are broader, and have a network of branching veins. So their veins do not run parallel to the leaves, they branch out like a branch in a tree on the leaves itself. Okay, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to make biological drawings as well as how to calculate the magnification of objects as well as how to construct a digital Thomas key. All these things are required in your exam because you don't know whether you'll be asked to draw biological drawings. And these drawing questions are basically giving the marks for you because you, do have, you don't have to be an artist to draw biological drawings. You just have to be precise and draw, draw it very, very clear. And that's it. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you.